What's up, man? I'm Cody Hildebrand, and this is Razorback Reels. I'm Adam Roberts, and welcome to our special Halloween episode. Welcome back. And, uh, of course, our all these spooky movies we're going to preview we're going to each share our five favorite horror movies definitely, of all time man, definitely it's going to be a good one tonight be sure to stay in for the whole thing but we're going to start out with just reviewing a couple new releases this weekend the first one is den in real life starring steve carell we're going to have drinks. I don't even remember. We're going to go on a date. No, 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 no. No, I'm not oh, going on a date. Yes, honey, Rana. it's time. No. Ruthie. Pig face draper, oh, no. mom, dad. Yeah, mom, mom I don't even remember Ruthie pig faced draper. I don't want to go. I don't want to go with the pig face. We'll double, okay? It'll be fun. It'll be fun, right, Marie? Yes, it, it, it'll be fun. <laughs> All right, that was a hilarious movie. You should definitely go see it. The plot sort of focuses. Steve Carell goes up with his family reunion. He's a single father. He meets. Uh, somebody falls in love with her, turns out that it's his brother's girlfriend. I mean, the plot's been done a lot before, like Moonstruck, yeah. you know, Family Stone and everything. But it, nobody has done it as well as it's been done here. And Steve Carell just thrives in these roles where the humor is all about these really awkward, cringe-inducing situations, and he's the average guy trying to figure it out. You know, that's how he is in The Office. That's how he was in Little Miss Sunshine in a lot of places. And he just does a fantastic job here. So if you're looking for your Steve Carell movie, this is definitely the movie for Steve Carell. Exactly. Like after, after Evan images. Almighty, it, it didn't do very well at all. So it kind of looked bad for his movie career. But this really saved it. He, I just can't describe how much I enjoyed seeing it. I saw it the day after I saw Saw 4, so it was a really nice change of tone for Speaking me. Speaking of which, up next we have Saw 4. Whoa! Whoa, what the f*** is that? It's the tool that's gonna save you alive. I don't wanna play a game. You just lean forward into the knives with your face. You press hard enough. And you'll release the arm and the leg restraints that bind you. Ah! Press hard, though. Live or die, Cecil. Unlike Den in real life, that's probably not a great late movie. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, if you're looking for closure with the Saw series in this film, what you figure you're going in, you're probably going to get like you got in every other Saw movie. Right. Uh, this is actually the first Saw movie I've ever seen. I wasn't looking forward to see it. So C- minus sort of reflects how I was, I guess, impressed by it because it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It was... It's hard to watch in a lot of places just because it is so graphic. It's like Abu Ghraib on steroids. But, <laughs> like, a lot of it is just really goofy. Like, the beginning scene is really graphic, but and it's a complete not, unnecessary. Right. It was, you're, it's, you're sitting there for, like, at least, it's got to be 10 minutes. 10 they're minutes. Just, they're just cutting the guy up. Ripping yeah. into him, yeah. And it's, it's a lot. That scene, at least, was a, just got so ridiculous it was funny. It wasn't so much as, oh, my gosh, what are they doing? It was like, okay. Well, I mean, that's how the Saw series goes, and really, on this one, uh, you know, you go in, you know, you think he's dead, and then, you know, how's this going to play out? And I mean, it's really interesting. I definitely suggest go see it. It's definitely a popcorn flick. You go watch it once because you've just got to know the plot twist. You've just got to try to guess it. I, mean, I don't know if of, I'd want to be snacking on popcorn when I'm watching the well, it's not Well, it's not your eating movie, but right. it's definitely a one-time go for the scare, at, at least. I mean, they're, it's not so scary as it is graphic, and the graphics only... The graphicness is almost too much, I'd all say. Right. And I, w I was even disappointed because I've been hearing about how the Saw series has all these clever traps and everything, but I didn't think anything they had in there was that clever. The plot, the big plot twist in there, which I won't spoil, was very obvious. I figured it out within the la first, like, maybe five yeah, minutes after the autopsy. It's almost too soap opera. Right, like, even, even before they set the mystery up, I already had solved the mystery. It's not... <laughs> Tough to figure, figure out. It out. Yeah, the only thing that I did really take away and enjoyed from the Saw series from this film would be um, it's 
it does give a closure as far as background information that you didn't get in the first three about uh, the main jigsaw, the killer. It gives a lot story, you know, it gets you into a personal outlook into him. As you saw in the clip, you know, you don't ever see him like that in the in the prior movies. So it's really good to kind of wrap him up as a character. Right, and I, I wasn't familiar with the story, so I, would, I just had somebody explain it all to me. So it was pretty hard to follow, at least yeah, for me. You definitely, yeah, you definitely need to at least read some summaries on the the first three, or maybe just make a saw night out of it and just watch all of them in a row. If you can handle that, right? <laughs> yeah, if you can take it, if you have a lot of extra time on your hands. But overall, for the Saw series, it was all right. It's an okay movie. If you don't like any violence or blood, obviously don't see it. I'm sure that goes without saying. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, uh, since this is our Halloween episode, we're going to showcase our special feature. Both Cody and I picked our five favorite Halloween movies of all time, and we're going to count them down each from five to one. And at the end of the show, we went around this week and asked some students what the scariest movie they've ever seen is, so we'll see your answers after this. My number five pick was Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary's Baby is one of my f favorite horror films. It wasn't, it's not really all that scary as it is just really creepy. Because when I saw it, we had some family friends that acted a lot like their neighbors in the movie. <laughs> and I don't really want to give away too much of the plot, but it's Mia Farrow and her husband move to an apartment and she gets pregnant and they have a baby. And there's a lot of interesting details in her pregnancy. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's very creepy. It makes you not want to have kids for quite a long time. And it's a hard movie to just kind of sum up for you without giving too much away. Right. It's, of course, Roman Polanski's movie. Interesting bit of trivia. The house that they used for the exteriors in it was the house that John Lennon was shot in front of later on. So I definitely suggest you go see it. But I definitely suggest you go see my number five pick, Saw, the beginning of the series. This movie was totally revolutionary for its time. Of course, by now you're probably tired of the Saw series, but you just really need to check out and see the, uh, you just gotta look back at the time period before all these came out. I mean, this movie starred Danny Glover. I mean, you hadn't seen him in a movie in like the past like six years before it came out. And the Dread Pirate Roberts. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pirate Roberts, yes. But um, it's, as far as style and uh, camera angles, it was all pretty much breakthrough. I mean, you'd seen it in a couple films like it, but um, it really, it changed the uh, face of the horror films. And I, I really think that's why it makes my top five. My number four pick is quite a bit funnier than Saw, Young Frankenstein. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes, or cutaway coat, perfect fits. <laughs> Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying mighty hard to look like Gary Cooper. Cooper, Come, let's mix. <laughs> that, of course, was probably the funniest movie of all time. Definitely. And it's, of course, Mel Brooks directing Gene Wilder and Peter Boyle in that scene. It's, if you're not already familiar with the movie, it's sort of a spoof on the horror genre, especially the Frankenstein movie. And it's just absolutely hilarious. Every minute of it, you're going to be cracking up laughing. That's one of the funniest scenes of all time. And 
if you haven't seen the movie, you really owe it to yourself to go see well, it. Well, go see every Mel Brooks movie. Well, really. for me, he's pretty hit or miss, but this is his hit. This I, is his big maybe, hit. Maybe just because I'm a big Mel Brooks fan, I tend to lean towards Mel Brooks, everything he does. He, I don't know. He made some bad ones, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, for my movie, I choose the vampire classic Lost Boys. As you can see from that scene, it, which doesn't really sum anything <laughs> up about it, it all you can really see is it sums up that it is in fact from the 80s. Uh, it stars Kiefer Sutherland in one of his first roles, along with the very infamous two Corys from the 80s, Corey Haim and Corey Feldman, in a vampire-esque film uh, taking place in uh, San Monica in California. Uh, it strikes home with the, uh, the surfer style, I guess you could say, <laughs> from the 80s that was very popular. But no, it really was. It introduced the new age of vampire movies into the 80s, and it really got Corey, it launched the Corys, and it somewhat launched Kiefer Sutherland, and that's, I'm sticking to that <laughs> to this day. Very nice. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We hope that you'll stay with us, as I assume you will, so you can find Definitely. out our top picks and what your picks were, too. Dad, one time we all had dinner in the car. Mom says you have to come in now. All right, welcome back to Razorback Reels. We're counting down our five scary or five best horror mil films of all time. Definitely. And my number three is what a lot of people regard as the scariest movie of all time, including myself, The Exorcist. Listen here with this cat. Would you like to leave a message? I see that she gets it. If that's true, then you must know my mother's maiden name. What is it? What is it? And now I gotta tell you, I saw this when I was 20, not a little kid, <laughs> and it freaked me out so bad. I mean, this is just a terrific movie all around. It was nominated for Best Picture Academy Award. It should have won. Of course, Definitely. Linda Blair's in it. And surprisingly, like, like even though just about every scene had a lot of cussing in it, and that's one of the only ones I couldn't <laughs> find. She even performs uh, sacrilegious sexual acts in the movie. Yes. It, surprisingly, the Vatican's film board actually endorsed the movie and said it was their pick of the year because 
it tells the story. It really does of capture somebody, the right. message that it's trying to get across. Exactly. It what makes it so doubt scary. To faith. What makes it so scary is it, the special effects aren't what make it so scary. It's just it really strikes home with people's fears about religion and stuff like that. Exactly. Like, that, you know, you're not sure that that's true or not if or it could ever happen, but it really. It makes right. you believe that it's, it can it br- happen. It, it brings really the does. viewer along with the central character in the movie from being your skeptical film goer who just wants to see a popcorn flick into really thinking this could happen and being freaked out. Yeah, man. It's, it's just it, incredible. It is a horrifying movie. There's no question in my mind. But I'm going to have to go with another classic theme of zombies and go with Night of the Living Dead, the 1990 version. He's getting closer. Dangerously close. Stop it. <laughs> He's going to hear you. It doesn't matter. He knows we're here. It's too late now. There's no escape. No, mother! You bastard. <laughs> <gasps> Johnny! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry. Now, what's so important about this film is, is that it escaped the uh, cliche, almost, cl- it almost escapes the cliche of every zombie movie. I mean, once you get the zombie plot, you kind of have to go through with it where everyone dies. But that doesn't ruin the end for you, <laughs> trust me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it has the uh, star uh, Tyler, Tyler Todd from uh, Candyman, which, you know, it's not didn't make my list. It wasn't particularly scary, but you may have seen it in the 90s. Well, this is the very brink of the 90s, 1990, when uh, everyone's trying to get in that George A. Romero feel, and the zombie movies are just coming back in. And so it really took a step into the zombies, which really opened it up for, you know, even video games like Resident Evil based a lot of their characters and so forth off of this, off of this movie. And what it really does is it gives a realistic approach where the characters throughout it don't make these same stupid decisions where, like, oh, here's a dark room that I don't know where anything is let me walk in and like check it out no they like the main character matter of fact like looks like looks at a dark room and then just simply shuts the door and locks it uh, I mean that's right. that's how I like to sum that movie up because it really does kind of step away from your stupid characters that take place in just about every zombie movie and still do too, so still, I mean it really didn't make that many breakthroughs shows, right? and, but people need to take a note from this film I think in particular on that all right, my number two pick is Psycho. is one of the most famous scenes in all of movie cinema probably the best one of the best scenes and psycho is the slasher film and it's really interesting because even though it created the slasher genre it also broke all the rules of the genre it was creating at the same time i don't want to spoil the plot for you if for some reason you haven't seen it yet <laughs> but you should I, it's just terrific alfred hitchcock of course directs and I saw Gus Van Sant's remake with Vince Vaughn as Norman Bates before yeah. I saw the original. And even though sh- though it's almost shot for shot, Alfred Hitchcock's is in- so it's much thriller better. masterpiece. It's so He's much the mastermind better. of all thrillers. And really what I suggest you do is not watch that because the 1960 version is far better than the remake right. in the early 90s. There's the no 90s. reason to even bother. So when you go to the <laughs> video store, because I know you watch everything that we recommend, Make sure you don't get the one with the color cover. Make sure it says Alfred Hitchcock and not Gus Van Sant. And don't let the black and white oldness of the film steer you away from it. It's still pretty frightening. And it really it does have a lot of breakthroughs, like Adam was saying. Alfred right. Hitchcock really put a lot of time into this film, as you can tell as you watch it, which I'm sure you will. Right. It was originally going to be done without music, which, of course, he saved for a different movie. But once he heard the score that was composed for him, he had to put it in. Definitely. And my number two pick is the classic, which you should not see the, re- the newer make, of 1976, The Omen. Your wife. And when he is certain to inherit all that is yours, then, Mr. Thorne, 
he will kill you. That's enough. And with your wealth and power, he will establish his counterfeit kingdom here on Earth, receiving his power directly from Satan. You're insane. He must die, Mr. Thorne. You asked for five minutes, and you've got five minutes. Go to the city of Megiddo. See Buchenhagen before it's too late. Now, I've heard you. I want you to hear me. Now, in that film, as you can kind of pick up, he doesn't mention who's possessed by the devil, but is in fact his son. Gregory Peck does an excellent job on driving the character because the main character really is his son, which is a small boy who has no prior acting to this film. But it is a masterpiece. Um, you have to look at it from the, from the concept of, you know, at the time, besides the exorcist, Satan wasn't really, you know, in... Uh, in favor, in I guess. Vogue. He's never really in favor or in vogue at any point. But um, it was really a taboo issue coming out because it was such a small boy and it was frightening to the, the masses at the time. So it was really just a breakthrough into that. And I mean, I know that I've said breakthrough a lot and then all my films I chose were breakthroughs. But I like hey, to think that they are. You like breakthroughs. I like Nothing breakthrough horror films that really set a new standard, which that I think did. It just followed the exorcist kind of feel. Right. And my number one pick for my favorite Halloween movie of all time is The Birds. Look! Look! Hey! No catching allowed! Also directed by Alfred Hitchcock, like Psycho Woods, The Birds is not only my favorite Halloween movie of all time, but it's one of my top ten favorite movies of overall of all time. I've seen it so many times, it's just fantastic. I remember being a kid, just get terrified of birds, and of course you'd always watch it around Halloween when the birds are changing their migration, so they, they would all be <laughs> clustering around outside. And I just love everything about this movie. The only score he uses is the sound effects of the birds in the film. I, I even remember when I was in uh, junior high, I loved the movie so much, I found out that Bodega Bay is a real city in California. So I wrote to their chamber of commerce asking for all these pamphlets and stuff just because I thought it was so awesome and I wanted to go there. It's, I, I really can't say enough good things about this movie. The ending is probably, it's probably my favorite movie ending of all time. And it's so, I guess, unconventional and so unexpected. You can sort of see it maybe as a precursor to zombie movies that would later come along, Light Night of the Living Dead. Another breakthrough, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, also, don't watch any remakes, especially by the Sci-Fi Channel. They like to do remakes of uh, don't bother. Hitchcock uh, <laughs> films. Please do not watch it. That is the best one. There is not another one that it even is in the... Right. You can't even hold it in the same camera. Right. I mean, I, I read the short story that it was based on, and it's actually kind of funny. So, I would, yeah, you know, you, if you want, enjoy that. I mean, probably the best thing about this movie is the thing I liked in North by Northwest, too. You don't have to be worried about dark corners and shadowy villains. What you're afraid of is being out in the open. That's where you're vulnerable, and that's what makes it so different from all the other horror movies, even like Psycho. It's, I, you know, I love it. Definitely see it. Well, for my, my number one pick, I chose The Shining. Okay. Let's talk. What do you want to talk about? I... Well, that film, is, uh, it's a Stanley Kubrick masterpiece <laughs> breakthrough. Uh, now, um, where it takes place with Jack Nicholson, which you saw in the scene, is a uh, caretaker. He takes the job of caretaker of a hotel throughout the winter, and he's stranded out there all by himself. And then slowly but surely, he begins to lose his mind. But somewhat the power of the hotel itself draws it in. Something evil surrounds him and ends up taking his uh, possessing you know, a member of the family, right, and then, right. you know, only one only one can make it, and they all go crazy. 
and they have great use of foreshadowing at the beginning of definitely, the movie to definitely. give away the whole plot. But I, I, I mean, I have to agree with you. The Shining is one of the best movies of all time. Stanley Kubrick, of course, my favorite director of all time. And definitely. this is kind of interesting. Uh, I read an essay a few years ago about The Shining where it suggested that one of the themes Kubrick had in there was about the treatment of Native Americans. And it's not very obvious, but he made some pretty good case. Like, it's called the Overlook Hotel, and you have all this Native American imagery throughout the movie, but you don't notice it because you overlook it. Mm -hmm. and you have blood seeping through the walls. and uh, You can read so much into all of his movies, yeah, and especially and the, the Shining. And the imagery in the film is what really makes it. I mean, exactly. it doesn't scare you with, you know, the, uh, like the... The soundtrack is great. I mean, it really gets to you, but that is that is nothing compared to the imagery that goes on throughout the film. And I mean, that's what really captures it. I mean, that's what's important in scary movies. I don't think sound should be the driving force because in you know it in could, movies it's nowadays, part of it, but you know, it's right. part of it. But you know, the things that jump out at you, that's that is nothing. I mean, that's in the movie. That's surprise, but not that's scary. surprise, not scary. This film is just naturally scary, right? And I mean, there's some fant uh, some fantastic scenes like he goes up to the you know, the hotel room, the woman in the bathtub, right? Definitely. So, like, in your opinion, what makes for a good horror movie? I think what makes for a good horror flick is, you know, not not too much gore. It's I think it's more to mess with the mind, like Alfred Hitchcock was a mastermind at. I think that um, right. as long as you get to the mind and not just, you know, oh, here comes a guy with a knife and he's going to kill you. Right. I mean, I always look at horror movies as sort of taking control of our worst fears and if we can express it through film or through other forms of art, then we can express our horrifying fears about religion or the supernatural in a way that's safe for us to do so. And, of course, we were all curious about what the scariest movie you have seen is. So, so what are you scared of? My name is Wendy, and uh, yeah, I'm a student at U of A. Uh, I would say The Exorcist. Yeah, that was the scariest movie I've ever seen actually and after that I promised myself to not see again a scary movie yeah I couldn't sleep that night I remember I was like uh, 16 hello my name is Alex Perez from Bentonville and I have to say the scariest movie that I've seen is Saw all of them well probably the second one the most only because you see people's limbs get chopped off you don't know when it's gonna happen and it's just anxiety just builds up inside of you it just makes you paranoid of everything that happens Hi, my name is Michelle Weesey, and I'm a junior at the University of Arkansas. And the movie that scares me the most is The Grudge, because that girl is really creepy. My name is Brendan O'Neill, and the movie that scared me the most was Tremors. Because when I was young, the thought of some giant worm creature coming out of the ground and killing me was a horrifying thought. Hi, my name is Allison Farnsworth. I'm from Bentonville. Um, the scariest movie that I've seen is Disturbia, because the creepy next door neighbor like comes in and hits him with a sledgehammer. And it just freaked me out, so I'm scared of my neighbors now. Hi, my name is Mike. Uh, I'm a junior at the U of A, and the movie that scared me the most, I recall, would probably have to be The Exorcist, to be honest with you, just because of the whole spiritual warfare aspect of it. Uh, I'm Catholic, I grew up Catholic, and um, had a lot of instances with our uh, old exorcist priest, um, and it's, it's just a different type of scary, you know, it wasn't the typical corny, all right well it seems like a lot of people agreed with me about the exorcist yeah i think it was it was somewhat diverse i don't know about movies like disturbia making the list but right you know, that's your opinion that's, that's all your opinion for. and disturbia actually didn't that come from a alfred hitchcock film a remake of course a remake rear window, uh, rear window. Right. so hey uh, hey hitchcock another breakthrough <laughs> in horror that uh, made it to a remake which people well, liked, apparently. Of course, we hope you'll join us <laughs> next week. We're going to review American Gangster and Jerry Seinfeld's movie, B, B movie. movie. Hopefully it's better than a B. Oh, well, I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. It's a breakthrough, B.
It's uh, October 31st, 2007. It's uh, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> the fallout of FEMA's fake press briefing continues. And Stephen Colbert is running for president. From the USA to the U of A, it's on Campus Crossfire. Campus Crossfire. Remember that if at any point during the show you'd like to call in and tell us your opinion, the phone number is 479-575-6930, or you can email uacrossfire at yahoo.com. So happy Halloween, guys! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, clearly this is our Halloween episode. Costume edition of Crossfire, in case that, you can right. tell. 